Testing, testing, one, two, three. Oh, we live. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so it looks like we're live. We'll start in a few minutes just to get everybody started. They log comments and stuff. Oh, okay. So I see the delay. I've gone back again. Okay. Welcome, everybody. <coughs> okay, thanks a lot for coming today. Uh, as you all know, my name is Dion. I'm going to show you some... Uh, mobile stuff. Uh, Albert did some uh, presentation last week on uh, some of the mobile things. I just want to go a little bit more in depth. I want to show you the whole workflow, how to create surveys on Survey123. And also we can, from this week, we can publish uh, surveys publicly without having uh, your field workers logging in. So if you've received that QR code and were able to scan it, you would have, um, and, and if you had Survey123 installed, you would have op been able to open the survey that I've created. Um, I hope to be able to go, go through the whole process of how it was created and how you, uh, what you need to download and what you need to, to do to get it publicly um, accessible. So, but first, before I start with the survey one, two, three stuff, I just want to give you a quick background. I'm not going to spend too much time on, on these slides. I'd rather show you the workflow of survey one, two, three. Um, so, as you all know, up until a few years ago, this is what mobile looked like. Everybody ran away from it. Peter van Jaarsveld is in Cape Town. He's still in rehab because of all these ugly devices that we had to work with. But they were real workhorses. We still get people that use these devices. ArcPad still runs on these devices, and there's no plan for ArcPad to run on Android yet. Um, they, they were tough as bricks that uh, Nomad on the right runs for years and years and years, no problem. But as time went by, things have changed. And um, actually, I Lizette gave me a cupboard to, to hide these devices. But now, these days, we have these type of devices that everybody wants. So now I've got a, a, a key for my cupboard so I can lock them away, actually, so nobody steals them. Um, it's now much more appealing to even the general public. Everybody sees these devices, they want to buy them, they want to use them for themselves, but they are proper GPS uh, or GNSS devices. Um, this is the C3 CT5, which is um, due to be shipped this week or next week. Marius, I think it was. Yeah. So hopefully by then we've got some devices that we can show to the clients. It's a very nice device, gives you up two to five meter accuracy. Um, and it's from the test that I've done, it looks um, like a very nice device. So that's obviously Android. Runs Survey123, runs Collector, runs all the other apps. Um, this is currently the devices that we sell. It now doesn't show the CT5, but it shows the CT7, which is the tablet and the, I think I put this pen on. Where's the pointer? Okay. So that's a CT7, which is a tablet. Um, people love it for the for field work. Um, it's got a strap at the back you can easily put in your hand. The smaller one is a CT4, and that little thing is just a gimmick that they sometimes give away to to for marketing. It's basically, I think it costs a thousand rand or something. It's it's a little small cell phone that runs Android. Xeno 20 is a Android device or Windows Mobile, but um, 
people buy it in, in the Android flavor. You can run obviously uh, collector and server one two three. You can get up to centimeter accuracy. Then it costs you in the region of over a hundred thousand rand. If you just want seventy centimeter accuracy, then buy a seventy thousand rand device. But um, it's a very nice device. You don't buy a hundred of them. You buy one for a for a company, and then they can do um, this the proper surveys. They can get proper accuracy. And with the other devices, you just do the attributions. You just collect attributes. <coughs> uh, uh, I'm just I'm just plucking numbers out of the air, but it's 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 not. On the maximum. I'm already talking loud. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, I'll speak a little bit louder. I'll, or I'll just stand outside because uh, you guys are gonna you guys are gonna bleed if I scream loud. So the TDC 100 is Trimble's device, which we've been hearing about for three four months since June basically. Um, we haven't seen it. We've only heard about it. They've launched it at the Esri user conference, but um, apparently they haven't brought it in because of pricing issues. So I think they've realized that that CTDC 100, it's an older operating system than the newest CT5, which is now coming out. So it, I think it runs Android 5 or something. So um, it's it's more expensive than the CD3 range. So I'm not sure what, what Trimble's going to do, but, but we wait with bated breath to see if they're going to bring it into the country. They probably will have to because the Juno 3 range, they've discontinued the Juno 5 um, is now replacing those ones. So this is the only other Android version that Trimble um, has at this stage. So other Windows devices, Trimble Yuma 2, the Juniper Mesa 2. Juniper Mesa 2 is more of a, a, a small computer. You, you get a docking station for it. You can plug a screen into it. You can plug a keyboard into it and a mouse. So it's basically a computer on its own. You plug it out and you can do your field work. So you've got one device for multiple purposes. <coughs> Trimble Yuma 2 is a, it's also quite a, a workhorse device. Um, we'll obviously run Arcpad and all those um, applications. Yeah, well. um, I'm not 100% sure. I think the Mesa 2 runs about in the 30,000 Rand range. But if you send me an email, I can give you proper pricing, you know, afterwards. Then external GNS S receivers. Uh, I've got one here as well. It's a Garmin Glow. Very nice little device. Um, you can put Velcro on it and st stick it onto your hat if you want to, if you're really into those type of things. Then you don't have to put it in your pocket. You get a better GPS reception. Um, Garmin Glow, <coughs> this little one here in the middle, gives you... I've I've gotten 1.8 meter accuracy quite regularly with it. Um, Price-wise, uh, it's less than 5,000 rand. So you can connect that to any um, Android device or iOS device. It works with Collector. It works with Server 123. Uh, there's a little bit of a trick that you have to use to get it to work on Android. But I'll, if there's time, I'll show you today just how to set that up. Then the Juniper Geode is a device that was launched last month, basically. Um, it will come in L1, L2 flavor, and it has a sub-meter accuracy claimed. I had a test device, and I couldn't get it to that accuracy, but when the proper device comes out, I'll, I'll test it again and connect it. You can connect it to RTK systems as well, to your trick nets, and then you should get sub-meter accuracy. Trimble R1 and the Trimble R2, um, both uh, GNSS uh, Bluetooth receivers that Trimble um, made. The Trimble R1 is submeter, and the R2, which, which is quite a big um, device, you, you, you prefer to put it on a pole and you pole mount it, and that's how you do your field work. Okay, so Esri, Esri used to talk about their mobile suite as Arctis for mobile, and then it was Arctis for Windows Mobile, and Arctis Mobile for Windows Mobile, and it, it really became complicated. Now, these days, they, they actually call, call it Arctis apps. 
So it's a cool name and it sounds better than all these weird names. And um, so you've got collector, you've got survey one, two, three, you've got navigator, workforce. Um, all seem to be very, very good products. Survey one, two, three, which I've worked with um, extensively, is a very good product. I haven't really had much issues with it. I've picked up two or three bugs, but it's quite a new product, so we can't really expect it to be 100% um, yet. Um, it supports quite a lot of the native um, Excel forms um, functionality, which I'll show you later on, and then things, tips and tricks that you can you can use with it. Uh, I'm not going to go through the rest too much. I want to focus today on Survey123. Oh, and uh, one important thing is that Navigator, if you see that little symbol there with a dollar, that means you must pay extra for it. Octus, <coughs> it's a premium app, so you pay per license. Okay, Octus for Windows Mobile, I'm not going to talk about it too much. It's no longer a part of ESB's development strategy. Um, and it will soon be phased out. It's still a, a proper tool. It, it does its job. If there's people that got the 100 Junos or Juno 5s, then they've, they've still got an option to use that software. Um, it obviously runs on Windows Mobile, on XP, on Vista, on Windows 7, Windows 8. So they've really, they've covered all the bases with that. You don't really, you don't have to only run it on these devices. It can also run on a laptop. So something that not a lot of people know. ArcPad, there's no replacement yet for ArcPad on Android. Uh, Leica developed um, Xeno Mobile, which is uh, quite similar to ArcPad. Um, the functionality where you, the nice thing about Xeno Mobile is that if you have to survey a road with, um, with the manholes and uh, the street uh, signs, you can do it all in one. You don't have to walk the street once to capture the, 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 the body line and then you do the points later on. You can start with a, with a street, you can pause it, you can capture a, a street light or whatever you need to capture or a manhole and then you can continue the, the street and, and, and you can do it in one shot. So ArcPad is still for, if you want ArcMap basically on a mobile device, that is what ArcPad is for. And it, let me just go one back. It runs on a plethora of devices, but not Android. So the big question that everybody asks is what's the difference between Server123 and Collector? So the biggest difference is that Server123 was developed to be able to capture intelligent forms. So the fact that it can capture a geo point is just a is, is just another attribute that it can capture. Whereas for collector, the the map is the is the center of the, the whole application. Um, Survey one two three runs on a lot of devices in on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux. <coughs> Whereas collector also runs on just about all the mobile um, devices. Smart forms is on Survey one two three, but not on collector yet. And then anonymous access, I should actually take that um, one and make it a yes for Survey123 because that now supports anonymous access. And both of them work offline. So currently in development on Survey123 um, is that you can, um, you can log in with Facebook or with your social media accounts. Currently it's just open now, so it's anonymous, true anonymous access. Let's just go to the next slide. <coughs> so everybody should now know Collector Park. It's about three to two to three years that it's been in the market. Uh, very nice application. You can you can capture points, lines, polygons, all those things. And that's a, that's the other thing about Survey One Two Three. You can only capture points at this stage. The workflow for Collector is from the office to the field to the office. So you have to first create your collector maps in the office, then you use your device to consume those web maps and then you go back to the office to, or you sync it back to the office or you analyze your data back in the office. Survey123, <coughs> so the, the website allows you to download all these uh, different packages for installation. 
Um, so it's Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. Uh, where the workflow is also office to field to office, same as um, same as Collector. And there is there's a few applications that that you need to download to get that working. But I'll show you in detail just now. I'm not going to go through Workforce too much because Alberta did it last week. He did a proper um, demonstration, interactive demonstration of that. Uh, as far as I know, it's still in, in beta on Android. Um, in I on iOS, it's, it's already um, been released. Then there's Navigator for Arctis, which I mentioned is a premium product. I'm not going to talk about this also too much. Alberta covered it pretty much. Um, and then track to there is a little app from Esri Labs that allows you to to do straight line navigation. Doesn't tell you to turn left, right. It just tells you to turn 10 degrees to the right to get to your destination. So it basically just receives a, a lat and a long, and it uses your current uh, GPS location to see where, uh, what bearing should you should you walk into to reach that specific point. And that's basically it for <coughs> for the mobile tools. So I just want to start this one up. So this is the slideshow for the mobile uh, of for Survey One Two Three. Uh, the idea that I had was that you guys can can follow on your laptops, but I'm, I think we can pretty much cover the functionality with me um, interactively doing it while you guys are watching. So um, I can make this also available, but it's easy to Google. To, to download Survey123 resources, there's a whole um, website allocated to that. <coughs> so you can, you can download the Connect software. Sorry, go back. The Connect desktop application is basically your interface between Excel and your uh, Arctis Online or portal. So Connect allows you to, to author your um, survey in Excel, which I'll show you later on, and to publish it also, also to Arctis Online or to portal. The interesting thing is that you don't need ArcMap or you don't need any desktop tools apart from the Survey123 Connect app. Then there is the Survey123 Connect web so you don't only you don't need to download Excel or, inst or use Excel to to create surveys. You can also use the uh, Connect website to to create uh, surveys, but not this. It's not doesn't have all this functionality that uh, you get on if you use Excel with the Connect application. <coughs> then there's obviously the app to capture the surveys. Uh, and then the Survey One Two Three Hub. And the interesting thing is that from Arctis Online to get to, to this Survey123 Hub is actually not so easy. You actually need to know or to Google the um, URL to get to Survey123 Hub, which is something that's very interesting. Um, from there, you can analyze your data. You can see how many records have been captured, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So Survey123 is based on XLS forms. Uh, it allows you to author your surveys in Excel. You can even use other open source um, spreadsheet applications. I know there's one Kingston spreadsheet that you can use also. You don't need to use Excel as long as your, your output is in the proper format. You can import it into Survey123 Connect and you can, you can create your um, survey on Arctis Online. So basically, the Connect software takes that spreadsheet or that uh, survey that you've created and it creates a feature service based on, on the layout of it. It also creates an XML document with, with the rules of your, um, your spreadsheet or your, your survey that you've created. And in the background, it's also keeping track of all the images that you're using in your survey. Uh, that gets sent up to Arctis Online or to Portal as a package but when you log into Arctis Online, you only see your feature service and your XML form. The images is somewhere inside Arctis Online. I haven't been able to figure out where they store it, but they store it as a package there. And when you log onto your device and download the whole survey, all of the images and all of your um, spreadsheets and your CSV files, everything gets loaded onto your, onto your cell phone. I'll show you uh, when we do the, the demonstration. 
So I'm not going to go through all of this. It's a little bit small in any case, but basically these are all the files or the field types that server OTP Connect supports. Uh, I don't think there's anything missing yet. I've been able to pretty much use um, or, or cover all the bases with these field types. It's got a geo point, it's got integers, decimals, text, select one, select multiple. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys when we do the demonstration. Um, we There's nothing really that's missing. <coughs> so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that one. So I've just came up with a little um, require a few requirements for a fake municipality that I called COSA. So the municipality requires an application that will assist them in identifying areas where the service delivery requires attention. So the highlights or the requirements are basically they want to crowdsource uh, information in form of a public survey. So that's good news for us. We, we can do that with Survey123. Uh, geolocation of each survey, that's perfect. And then the capturing of a service rating, 0 to 10. Um, and then some categories you don't want to use it to type tweet text, so they must choose it from a list. And then if housing is the selected category, then you get um, subcategories that you can select. So maybe they want to focus on asbestos or something like that. Uh, they don't want to be um, bogged down with other data, so they're only interested in perhaps asbestos eradication or um, structural damage of RDP houses. And then I've just added our number as an emergency number, so just so that you guys don't find phone 10 triple one all at the same time. So I'll show you, I don't know if you've played with that on the on the app, but I'll show you how that works. And then uh, add, add two photos of that specific service, uh, public um, survey to the, to the application as well. So from a design point, I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it rather than having you read through it. But basically you got uh, all your field types here and then a multi-select for your, for your category and then a uh, sub-select that's based on your previous select. <coughs> so if housing is chosen, those options will come available. And then the yes, no field for the emergency. So I think let's go ahead and try and do that. That is, This is what the end result looks like. For those of you that have downloaded the survey, you will, would have seen it on your mobile device. Depending on the form factor, it will look a bit different. They squash things or make them bigger depending on the size of your screen. That seems to work pretty nicely so far. I've got a S4 Mini and it um, it scales pretty well. So the service rating is a nice visible uh, scale where you can choose from green to red. I've added some some nice touches to to really uh, bring uh, the point across that zero is good and ten is bad. So there's no confusion which way the the scale works. It's always a uh, something people wonder, is it is 10 good or is 10 bad, or which way does it go? Um, yes. This one is in increments of 10. I don't think you can change that, but... The Not on this, on this widget that they use, yeah. It's probably still coming. Okay. Yes, you can have your own categories with own numbers assigned to them. So the number is, in this case, it's just visible because it's a, this is like a pain rating from zero to 10. <laughs> there's no, there's no um, uh, text assigned to it, but you can have a normal um, category from, from zero to 10 and assign it to your own names. Um, Survey123 is open source to a degree, so if you use um, App Builder, you can customize it. So I haven't done that yet, it's something on my wish list to still do. But uh, yeah, I would like to see what is the capabilities or what can you actually customize of it. So Survey123 was developed in, in Qt. Yeah. Yes. Uh, even that track to their application, you can download it on GitHub if you want to. Um, Esri is really getting into the open source type thing. So, um, so yeah, so 
so here I chose housing and I'll show you guys then if it's if you choose housing there then the options at the bottom becomes available uh, I'll also show you some pitfalls I was I thought I was clever by creating um, colors in the options but that messes um, the analysis of the data a little bit up because it sees the the color HTML tags as actual labels for my fields but uh, I there's something to look out for um, that, that I'll show you so without further ado Let's see what Server123 can do. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to see um, afterwards if I can do that. I've also wanted to have a dynamic list. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, you should be able to do that. You can count how many was selected. So that let's uh, that is a good thing to start there. Maybe um, the documentation of Server One Two Three is quite extensive. There are things that's that that they say that, that they say they support, and then when I when I email them, then they say no, it's not yet supported. But um, so yeah, <laughs> vaporware. So formulas. If you go to the um, I've uh, all these links I can I can give you, but it's easy to Google uh, the formulas page on the uh, Survey One Two Three website on their documentation. You get pretty much all the answers here that you might need. So there's a count selected question. There's a number of selected answers. So that will that will be something that um, level that you that they can use for for that specific requirement. So here they listed all the functions and all the um, possible methods that you can use in, in, in your spreadsheet. Now the nice thing is that Survey123, you don't need to be a developer to, to, to create a survey, but it helps if, if things get a little bit more complicated. So let's, let's, look, at, um, let's look at the service delivery one that I've created. So if you, this is your all, this is the list of all the servers that you've um, that, that you've done so far. So a quick way to hide things is just at the top to search for a specific word. So it's nice if you if you create your surveys, always use a keyword in the name of your survey. So if you end up with a hundred surveys, you can quickly filter them. So now I've only filtered them through to the BFI list that I've done, or if you only want to see the ESRI ones that I've done, then I just type ESRI, and it's and it's a nice way of just sorting your your surveys out and then on the screen um, if I click on sign in you can also connect with them to portal the the problem with using portal for your surveys is that the the ESRI or the survey one two three hub the web application that allows you to do analysis is not available for portal so and I'll show you actually how nice that um, web website is it allows you to to print your surveys and things like that So let's just go back to service delivery. So if you click on it, 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 it creates a quick um, mock-up or wizard that shows you what you've done so far. I can't uh, submit from here um, because it's not a true client. It's just a wizard to show you um, your application that you're busy creating what it looks like. So yeah, it shows the number there. You can't customize it to do anything else, unfortunately. So, just going through the functionality that that my fake municipality wanted. If you you can choose multiple categories here, and you have to select one. If you see that little red star there, it means that they have to select at, at least one um, category. If I choose housing, then it opens up these um, subcategories at the bottom here. So what you can do is uh, you can you can have a back-end process that if they choose as bestos, that it gets pushed to um, to workforce that you can send somebody out to go eradicate that uh, that specific asbestos incident. Um, and then if if this is an emergency, so let's say. Um, Let's say it was, uh, or let's say it's crime. 
and it's an emergency, then that uh, hyperlink there will actually on your Android phone will open um, your phone dialer with that number that I've showed you earlier. So let's look at, um, if you look at this layout here, the top button will open Excel and open your uh, server in Excel. The second one refreshes Excel and your uh, wizard to show you uh, or to update your screen here. The folder one, it can be quite handy because sometimes you need to republish a service or you need to um, delete it and start from scratch again, but then the, the service is already published in Arcus Online. So these two files <laughs> is your link to uh, between your service and Arcus Online or Portal. It, it keeps track of where did you publish it last and uh, um, the dates and things like that. So if you delete those two files, you can republish it. Um, you shouldn't have a problem. Also, that specific XLS file that stores your survey, if you decide you want to rename your whole survey something else, you can create from Survey123, from the Connect app. Uh, sorry. If you click on New Survey, the bottom option is file, so you can you can you can uh, point it to a specific Excel file that you've previously created, and you can recreate that whole survey from scratch by uh, by just importing it. So these templates are loaded off um, off the internet, so they're not they're, they're not installed with your um, application. So that's quite nice. Sometimes you'll see it takes a, a while to load. That's how I figure out that it's actually uh, stuff that comes from from the Esri's uh, online store. So, and it's very nice because then if new things get rolled out, the samples get updated automatically. So you already, you'll see, oh, there's a new sample available. Uh, the samples are quite nice for users that want to use something specifically like barcode scanning. It's already there. They can just customize it and, and put their logos and whatever. So let me then also show you. So there's the publish button there to publish your um, service to Arcus Online or to Portal. If you've already published it, this little button will come available. So I can click on that and say manage this survey in Arcus Online. So I've already published it. There's already people that, people that uh, contributed, and it will take me to the website and ask me to log in. So this, the infographics on this website is quite impressive. I must say they've done a lot of work here. So obviously now you can see between 8 and 10 today, there was some data that was some records that were captured, uh, which users contributed. So in next year's performance appraisals, these numbers are going to get used to give you um, bigger numbers around. So you guys better start capturing. Uh, if you go to the analyze section, it can give you the breakdown of how many issues are for housing, education, health, uh, skills development. It loaded this one a little bit later, that's why it just popped up there. Uh, and then the service ratings. I don't know exactly how they work this out. Looks a bit weird. I would have expected one average. Um, so the categories and then if housing was chosen, uh, what is the biggest problems that they're facing with? So there's hazardous materials that's leading currently. So you can uh, you can create a little document from this, which is quite nice. Then if you go to your data tab, so okay. Okay, so I've just chosen um, chosen one of the features that were captured. S this website is a little bit cluttered. The, the flow doesn't work for me so nicely yet, but it, it the functionality is quite nice. So you choose a feature on the left-hand side. So let's choose uh, one that was captured today. And then this individual response is actually a little print out that we can use. So I'm just going to say print current response. So something that we had to develop earlier or in uh, SQL Server reporting services now out of the box gives you a little report that you can that you can print. 
So I messed up a little bit. I didn't. Um, I don't know where that thing took me now. Let me know. Okay. So yeah, that that it's a pity that they haven't opened that web um, server with the free hub open opened it up for server uh, for uh, portal yet. But I'm sure it will come soon because it's it will be an issue to to create your own reports in portal if you use server on three. I mean that functionality that they've got on on the hub is pretty good. So let's open up the Excel spreadsheet. I've hidden some columns here. Let's have a look at it. Yes. Okay. So the geo point obviously obviously is the one that uses your location. <coughs> so some interesting tips if you make this read only, then the user can't go and change the position. But the only thing is that you can't retake the position as well. Um, Survey one two three will use the first location it gets, and it will it will stick with that one. And the user can't say, "I want a, I want a better location." But what you can do is you can interrogate this location that gets stored in the database, and you can go see what is the accuracy that was achieved. So if the user, I'm just going to open up here. So if the user moves the map and changes the location manually, then the accuracy values are zero. So that is what uh, Esri did so that you can figure out that the user changed the location or was it actually captured by the GPS. So I've actually, um, later on, if there's time, I'll show you another demo that I've um, s uh, extensively interrogated that location to, for instance, figure out how far are you from another point. So if, for instance, you've got to do meter readings or stuff like that, you can see how far was the guy from that, that specific meter when it was read. So all of those things are possible. Um, so just going back to the, to the spreadsheet. So in that column, you define your field types. This one that says named is actually the one that gets stored in your uh, database as the field, the attribute name, the label is an alias, so you can't put spaces in the names, but you can put spaces and you can put nice formatting stuff in inside the label. So as you can see there, I've changed the service rating font color green. Um, so you need to know a little bit of HTML to do this, but it's it's not overly complicated. If you, I, I mean, I didn't do HTML before I started with Server One Two Three, and and I. You know, it takes you a day, and then you you're comfortable with opening tags and closing tags. And the the biggest um, thing to remember is that you you start you use quotes like that in HTML, um, but in your calculations for uh, string values, you use single quotes. <coughs> so this is the functionality that does the calculation. So if it is an emergency, so that those dollar signs just references that field that was captured. So if the emergency f value is yes, then uh, it will show that this is an emergency situation. Otherwise, it will show the, the opposite. So if you choose yes there at the top, I've just put a little uh, summary at the bottom. So it, it uses the values, uh, values that you've already captured and just creates a little summary at the bottom. So the start is actually the start is a date format. So that will capture the, the begin date of the um, survey. So a, an interesting thing is if you want to use this, it's called a distress widget, this one on top that Skulk asked about. That's called a specific, it's a, it's a distress widget. The, to get it to display like that, you must, you must use an integer field type and then you just tell it in appearance to be a distress um, widget. So if I change this to a spinner and save it, so w there's a link between the Connect software and the Excel, so it can see that you've changed the, um, the actual survey. So I can click on plus and it will change to 9, 10, or I can click to minus and it will change. 
<coughs> so it's very nice you can immediately see uh, the changes to your to your survey <coughs> yes yeah I'm the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it creates this whole template, um, everything except the values that I've got that I've highlighted there. So the top part, the type, name, label, int, all of those uh, are there. Uh, this is the choices. So I'll show you now how this uh, how this comes into play. Then there's settings. And just this is just the name of the survey, and then the types. Um, the thing is, they don't update this section quite often, and I've found that there's actually a few things that's missing in here. That's what I, why I prefer to go to the website, because that, that, that seems to be always up to date. So if you're not sure what um, field type to use, you can come to this Types um, tab, and you can see what's all the options. But also in your survey, um, you can... I think I've actually overwritten some of the values here, but so you can you've got drop downs there, so you can also choose it from a drop down. So it's pretty much guided. So I just want to see something if this one uh, will allow me to do this. But if you, for instance, duplicate the name, okay, uh, I think I've I've broken the spreadsheet, but it it brings it up in red to, to show you that you've actually now used the same name twice. And uh, that's one thing, uh, these rules on these cells are rule or cell specific. So if you copy from one cell to another cell, you overwrite that rule. But um, uh, that's something that you, you will get used to over time. Not you, you must just copy the contents, you mustn't copy the whole cell. Um, otherwise you'll, you'll lose that functionality that, that they've uh, given you. Um, so as you can see, those are all the field types. So there's image fields and there's node fields. Um, required is yes, so the the person has to choose a um, a geo point location. The required message is then please choose a location. So if on my on on the application you try to submit without having chosen a location, you can uh, you can give the user a, uh, a message to say please uh, choose a location. And then the same with the sub categories as well. It is mandatory that that yes causes that little red star to appear. On your on your survey, and then appearance um, for different field uh, types, it will have a different effect. So that horizontal is for your multiple select, so it uh, displays side by side. So it will display like that. I can change that to if I change it to nothing. I think it it it's uh, it, it it does it from top to bottom. So then you have it like that. So if you've got very long um, labels, you might not want it to put it side by side because it's gonna it's gonna uh, cut your your labels off and put them underneath each other. This one works quite well. Actually, skills developers are already a little bit long for to have it um, uh, in in a side by side manner. But it, you know, on my phone, it, it just like the, the last two digits or last two characters, it it puts in the next line. Um, so I can just change that one back to horizontal. Default values, so if you paid very good attention, you would have noticed that when you start up the survey, it always starts with a five rating. So that you do by changing the default settings. Um, and then relevant, you can put all kinds of calculations and stuff into these fields. So if it's a dynamic look and feel, then you can, you can, you can um, program it like that. So this relevant field, it affects if the um, application or that specific widget is visible or not. So if you see here on the spreadsheet, that subcategory is only relevant when the selected service category is housing. So if I chose, if you choose housing, then it then it shows it. Otherwise, it's invisible. You, the user won't see it. 
Um, and then also the relevancy comes here into the, the, f the note that shows the phone number. So if it is an emergency, if that was chosen a as, a, as a yes, then it will display it. And then that phone intent, uh, it is a URI, it's a univer universal uh, resource uh, indica indicator or something, URI. In any case, that allows you on your phone, from one application you can you can open your phone dialer or you can open Twitter as I'll show you later on. You can even open WhatsApp. You can you can open basically any other application that has exposed that functionality. And that is how they also open uh, track to there with a little intent like that. So at the bottom and something that um, is very good to learn to use is this concat function. It allows you to concatenate strings and your values and your Anything that you want to concatenate or put together in one uh, look and feel, like this, all that stuff at the bottom, I did it with one note field, just by concatenating and using a little bit of HTML uh, to get that right. So it concatenates a string that says service rating and then a value, and then there's a little HTML tag. All that does is it breaks to the next line. You can put center in there, you can put font color red in there, as long as you close it again. Because I've noticed that if you don't close your tags, then that, that um, formatting might run over to other fields that you don't really want that to happen. And then I quickly want to show you here at the, at the back of the spreadsheet, things that don't really work as I expected they would work. So the field alias is supposed to overwrite the label field. So because I had the HTML tags in there, I just I wanted to overwrite it with just service rating and not get those HTML tags in, in my feature service. That didn't, that didn't work, but I'll still see why that didn't work. Um, and then you can put input masks. Input mask also doesn't work very well. You can force the first uh, character to be a capital and the rest to be lowercase. Uh, it, it doesn't work well yet. It's, it's, it's a little bit uh, clunky on, on the client side. For instance, it you will start with a capital, and if you only delete that capital, then you can't change the rest of the sentence. So there's weird things like that that's still popping out there. Um, you can obviously specify the field length. So these S3 columns, if I can call them that, is the ones that they've put in to, to allow you to use this standard tool and still have the S3 functionality. So if you've got a uh, calculated field here, you can force it to be a specific field type so if you if, if if that calculation is actually an integer but your database requires a, a decimal then you can force that field type to be a decimal so it will honor that and it will create a feature service like that so now I want to just show you on my phone um, if everything is running it should Just reconnect this. Okay, there we go. All right. So I'm going to quickly show you some spread, uh, some surveys that I've created. Uh, let's go to the one that everybody have seen now. I just want to show you how that phone intent works. So um, I've I'm using this Garmin Glow device to get the location. So I currently don't have location switched on. The way to do that is to basically go into the developer settings and say allow mock GPS um, uh, connections. connections for the for the location, and then you don't need your phone's GPS. It whatever your phone gets from a Bluetooth device, it will use that as a location. So you don't drain your phone's battery, and that uh, Garmin Glow has got its own proper eight-hour-a-day battery that, that will last the whole way long. So um, I just want to show you here at the bottom. So if this is an emergency, which yes. So I'm now going to click on that phone emergency services link. 
So that opens that intent and it tells the phone this application wants to wants to dial a number. It doesn't dial it, but it gives you the, the number on your dialing screen and you're allowed to, to, to go from there. Um, so you've basically seen everything on that screen. So what I want to show you now is the other example that I've created. So this survey, I've used the telephone list that we all get. I've added that as a, a comma separated uh, file to my survey and I can pull data out of that, um, that uh, phone list. So I've put LinkedIn in as the default and it gets my employee details. So if I put in Lawrence Keith, he's not here, so I can use his name. So it, it draws all that data from that uh, comma separated um, file. It gives his number, it gives his email address. Then it also shows which office is Lawrence um, supposed to be in. So it says Midrand office, then there's a little map uh, intent that I've created. If you click on that, it's the same principle as the phone dialer, but it opens Google Maps. <laughs> so the idea that I want to show you is not that, that I could create this, but to open your heads that what, what server I want to see is capable of doing. Um, then if I click on directions, it's a different intent, so it gives a start point and an end point, and it will open um, and it will give you directions to, to where you need to go. So I need to jump out of the window and run to the front door. <laughs> and these are things that, uh, that Esri hasn't really published yet. It's just by playing around with it and figuring out how these things work that, you, that you're able to see that you should be able to actually connect to any other application um, that are exposing um, those intents. So on social media, you can, for instance, tweet. It will open your Twitter application. This might I should have actually opened it before I started. but So there's um, this tweet sent from, so you can uh, pre-configure what text, you can even put that uh, geolocation in there. Maybe you want to say you're at this event or here is a asbestos house and you really want to make it visible on social media. You know, something like that. <laughs> or you've got a, a leaking uh, municipal water pipe and, and, and you want the attention because they're not answering the phones or whatever. Uh, then you can even send a WhatsApp message. So if anybody wants the the code or want to see how this works, I, I'll I'll freely put it on I'll put it on the professional services under my name or, or anywhere that uh, anybody has access to. So you can now select a contact. Uh, let's say Leonard, and then you can just choose to to send that specific message to uh, whoever you want to on your contact list. So it's not a it's not an automatic phone dialer. It's not automatic publisher to WhatsApp, but it gives you that functionality to automatically open it up. Um, and then another thing, if, uh, yeah, I've chosen there on top. So if you look at the GPS details there, distance to the Midland office is plus minus four meters. Uh, current speed is 0.26. That I got by interrogating that GPS location, that uh, survey one, two, three, that geo point uh, field. So just interrogating that field, I can see uh, what the accuracy is. I can see where the user is and make calculations to other GP, uh, to other coordinates. So I've got another uh, um, file that I use to store the officer's um, coordinates in. So I just draw the coordinates out of that file and then I do some calculations. It's pretty intense calculations. Um, if I go open that specific, um, which one is this one? Yeah. But this is actually, so this spreadsheet is to calculate all the distances and stuff. So that specific, I think they have a Savicine uh, formula to calculate it. You can use ACOS course, you can use all your trigonometry uh, functions to, to do calculations. So that is a complex calculation. So I use Notepad++ to make sure that all my tags and all my brackets are in the right place. Otherwise, you're, you're never going to get it right. You can't sit and 
and capture that formula in Excel. It will it will take you ages. Um, so um, and then just to show you, all these fields are calculate fields. They don't get shown on the on the screen, but you can use them as uh, placeholders for calculations that you've made. So I've got GPS, lats, and longs, and that full data function is the function that I use to get the actual y and the x coordinates out of those out of that geo point. Um, and then you must get it in radians, so you multiply by pi, divide by 180. So it's very powerful, and it supports a lot of uh, functions and for instance, the trig trigonometry functions, um, where you can calculate distances with. Um, and that's, that's basically wanted what I wanted to show you guys. Yes, uh, that's the other thing. Let me just get back to my screen here. So, yes, you can. There's a few things uh, that also came out this week where you can interrogate the device and get some information from the device. You can get the operating system, get the ID. Yes, then you can do that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. So if I change this, um yeah, it's law. Is it no, it is a claw. Um, so if I change. Um this employee to to Dave to Blanche. So the other thing is this lookup is case sensitive, unfortunately. So if I type the surname with a lowercase uh, t, then it won't find it in my comma separated um, file. But well, that's a small price to pay. You can all you can always convert the file to always be lowercase, and then convert your input later on to just look for lowercase. So now I found Dave to Blanche. I can phone him, do all those fancy stuff. So the map at the bottom, uh, sorry, the GPS details now calculates the distance to the case in the office as the crow flies to 460 kilometers. So yeah, just to show that I didn't crook those values. And basically that's what I wanted to show you today. You, it, you can try and get that right, yeah. Yeah, it's it it, uh, it it should be something that's possible, but um, it yeah, I haven't I haven't got to to do that integration yet. What we can probably try and do is with these intents, rather than uh, having an intent that shows on the screen, you can perhaps do a, a you can push a um, a feature to the workforce feature service, but that is still still in the pipeline to see if I can get that right. I would probably need a week of uh, working at home to get that right. <laughs> yes, you can have a little tick mark. <coughs> yes. Yeah, you just, you just need to make it um, compulsory, yes. So, is it required? Yes, but you can. That yes can also be a calculation. So you can see, you can say that specific um, field, the value must be uh, yes or ticked or whatever. No, no, you can definitely do that. <coughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Or you can have it as an image. So the other thing is, if I click here on Esri South Africa, it opens it uh, hugely. But you can. You on the other um, server that I did, I added the um, risk matrix. I added as a picture, so if they click it, they can see. Okay, what is the what does it look like? So you can use that for all kinds of different um, things to do. Yeah. All right, well that's basically it. Thank you very much. You want what? Oh no, I don't have that. There's no, there's no more time left. It's, it's quarter past ten. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll do that next time. <laughs> this took me too long. It's, uh, it's too nice not to just show this. Okay. No. If you remember, Edward was also supposed to. He was supposed to be busy today, but I see he's working on his phone there. Ha, 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 ha.